Hey, I'm Larry Janeski from Dr. Energy Saver. Well, we're at this house and we've done so much to this house, we've got a, a few things left. This upper attic was a, a small attic that we air sealed and insulated with cellulose. This part of the house had a very tiny little, what we call a devil's triangle uh, attic with slopes on the left and right, and we took care of that with cellulose. But we have two parts left in this house to get the top of the house insulated really well. And that is this shed roof section here. Uh, the first floor is bigger than the second floor. We have a choice of accessing it from the inside, but we'd have to drill holes through the drywall, and that means patching and painting. So we're gonna get that from the outside and I'll show you how we do that. And then we have a little section right here that is a cathedral ceiling and a really charming little uh, old uh, farmhouse room. Being cathedral, uh, we have to access the rafter bays and fill them with dense pack cellulose. And we're gonna do that from the outside so we don't have to disturb the woodwork and the charm of the inside of the building. Let me show you this cute little farmhouse room that's under this cathedral ceiling. Well, come on, what are you waiting for? Can't you just picture sitting here in the rocker in the winter time, kicking your feet up with a cup of tea and a fire going? This is just a beautiful little room and uh, we have this uh, woodwork. It's one by six and one by eight, uh, tongue and groove V-joint pine that's uh, actually been restored just about five years ago. Had a great painter in here and, and refinished the whole ceiling like fine furniture. And we don't want to disturb the inside of this uh, by drilling holes to access the rafter bays to blow cellulose in. And blowing cellulose in a cavity from the inside of a house is not recommended uh, unless you had absolutely no choice because there's so much dust. So we're going to do this from the outside, uh, from the roof, and we don't have to disturb the inside at all. Now you can see we have two skylights in this roof, and we also have a, a little gaps between the tongue and groove boards where air could escape out of the roof system. And uh, with a dense pack cellulose method, and when we pack it in there to the right density, 3.7 pounds per cubic foot of cellulose insulation, uh, we can stop the airflow through the boards and through the roof. And that will make a considerable difference in how much heat leaks out of this area. The first step is to take this ridge vent off. Now, a ridge vent is supposed to uh, interact with soffit vents and allow air from the soffit vents up through the rafter bays and out the ridge. But in this case, there are no soffit vents at all. In fact, there's no soffits. There's just a flush fascia and a gutter, which is typical of many Cape style homes and older homes. And uh, this ridge vent was probably just put on here by the roofer the last time that the house was re-roofed. The house is 80 years old, was originally a Sears and Roebuck house and it didn't have ridge, a ridge vent uh, originally, but you know, the roofer says, well, it's cathedral, we put a ridge vent on, you know, we're here. Um, but it's not uh, acting as a system at this point. So we're gonna remove this ridge vent, and in the end, we're not gonna need it. We're just gonna put ridge caps on here, and we're gonna have an unvented roof assembly. Okay, now we have the ridge vent off, and one thing that we learn about the ridge vent is just as we suspected, it's not doing anything. There's no soffit vents, but besides that, you can see there's two bays uh, uh, at the end that aren't vented and on either side, so there's just a little section in the middle, and in this particular uh, roof, which was really uh, built in, probably in the 50s, and then who knows, maybe in the 70s, it was, uh, uh, remodeled on the inside and I'll show you why we know that in pulling the uh, roof sheathing off we see that first of all we have stain here and we see that there is uh, looks like uh, four by sixes as rafters two foot on center so at one point this ceiling was open and all there was between the outside the roof and the inside the stained surface was three quarters of an inch of, of pine. And so there was no insulation at all. And then somebody realized, hey, it's cold in here. So <laughs> they uh, then put uh, two layers of 
uh, in this case polyisocyanurate foam insulation up against the uh, stain surface. Okay, and you have about an R20 there, but it's not air sealed. This, uh, this foam insulation has uh, got spaces on either side and so forth, so air can still get through. We have a space between the bottom of the foam and the pine boards here. And I can stick my arm in here, and that's what we're gonna dense pack with cellulose. So we didn't really uh, fully understand the structure until we got it apart. And we have a six inch uh, rafter and three inches of foam. And so therefore we have a, a, a two to three inch space actually uh, in between here that we're gonna dense pack with cellulose. And in dense packing, we're gonna stop the airflow and add our value to this ceiling. It's gonna be an unvented assembly as it is now. It's really unvented. And we're gonna uh, leave it that way on purpose this time. One thing that we see here in opening up this roof is that this foam insulation was eaten by bees. And the uh, bees came in here and they tunnel in this foam and you can see all the dust that they make. And the homeowner has been complaining of uh, dust falling through the ceiling in places. In fact, piles of it on the mantelpiece and so forth. Uh, so we know that there is plenty of space for air to leak out and uh, the thing about cellulose is that it's treated with borate, which is a safe chemical that's mined from the ground and it prevents mold from growing on the recycled newspaper. That's what cellulose is. And it prevents uh, bugs from getting in there. The bugs do not like borate, it keeps bugs away. And so uh, this will stop the bees from coming in there and um, it will also stop the air leakage. And, uh, Borate, in fact, is very, very safe. It's in an additive in eyewash. That's how safe it is. Okay, in this method, we're going to use a uh, PVC rigid uh, fill tube, and this allows us to push all the way down the cathedral ceiling to get it all the way to the bottom and fill those bays and use a dense pack method where we're gonna ramrod the PVC into the cellulose as we pull it back, as it fills to get a very high density. Now, uh, if there were a ridge board, which typically there is, and this is a very old house that doesn't have a ridge, we would drill a hole through the ridge to access the bays on either side of the roof. And we could blow the back of the roof from the front and the front of the roof from the back through holes in the ridge board. The ridge board is not a structural member of the roofing system. It doesn't bear any weight whatsoever. And drilling holes in it is not a problem. Dense packing cellulose is technique. There's a difference between blowing cellulose loose like we do in an attic floor and dense packing it into a cavity and it's all technique. And if you do it right, the cellulose is so dense and you can see it here. See how hard this is here. This is really packed in there and air cannot get through this cellulose when it's dense packed properly. All right, now we have both the front and the back uh, dense packed and you can see how tight this cellulose is and that's gonna stop airflow and add as much R value as you can get with this size rafter. Now we're gonna put the roof back together and go tackle that shed roof section over there. The ceiling over these two rooms is flat and then the second floor wall comes down and it forms a triangular shaped attic that's not accessible from anywhere. To insulate this attic, to add insulation, we could drill holes through the drywall on the second floor but that would involve patching and painting. So we decided to pull the gutter off and take the fascia board off and we can access this little attic through each bay right here. Now there is some fiberglass bats there, but we know that fiberglass bats are poor insulation. It's not enough insulation. We're gonna add a significant amount of cellulose here. And we're gonna put uh, about a foot of cellulose into this space. And uh, the homeowner tells us that in the winter time, uh, there's a lot of ice damming here, and we have uh, icicles coming down the roof, and uh, we're going to significantly improve that situation. As it turns out, we're able to get a dense pack in this entire little attic. It's taken a lot of material, but it is uh, dense packing in there, which is good news. Okay, again, we just used the fiberglass to filter the air that's coming out that we're blowing in there. So then not so much cellulose comes out. And if we take a look, we can see, look at that beautiful. We have 
that cellulose is dense packed in there as tight as a mattress even like that. So now no air can leak out of the house. We've got a tremendous amount of insulation, great R value there. So we're gonna put the fascia back on and put the gutter back together. You know, seeing video of dense packing cellulose can be a little boring because you can't see the action. You don't know how much cellulose is actually coming out of this fill tube into that bay and at what velocity. And I wanna show you now how the cellulose comes out of here and you really appreciate that if this was in a closed cavity that would really pack in there given the proper technique by the operator. So let's turn this on here and look at that. That cellulose is really coming out of that fill tube. And uh, by the way, if we get a little of this in your yard, don't worry, it's all natural and it's great mulch. Well, the day is ended and there's another project completed by Dr. Energy Saver. We have the cathedral ceiling all air sealed and insulated with dense packed cellulose. You can't even tell we were here. And we have that uh, shed roof there also dense packed and insulated with uh, cellulose. The other day we did the upper attics, which we have a big main attic up there and we have a little devil's triangle with slopes that we took care of the other day. We actually insulated all the walls in this house as well and did uh, a lot of other work. You know, at Dr. Energy Saver, we make houses more comfortable and energy efficient. And we're very proud of what we do. The work we do uh, helps people enjoy their homes without drafts and rooms that are too cold in the wintertime and too hot in the summertime. And they also pay for themselves because we lower the amount of fuel necessary to heat the house to their comfort level in the winter time and lower the amount of electricity necessary to cool the house with air conditioning in the summertime. And the money our customers save on that more than pays for the project over time. So uh, it's a win, 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 win situation. It's great for the environment, makes you feel good. If you have a house that you'd like to make more energy efficient and comfortable, call Dr. Energy Saver. We'd love to come out and look at your house and help you.